This is the Trump Breaking News Network. Here's what's happening. Why Donald Trump's business dealings matter. By Chuck Todd, Mark Murray, and Carrie Dan. Why Trump's business dealings matter. You can add another example to the list of actions that President-elect Trump has taken that mixes his business interests with his new office. Just days after defeating Hillary Clinton, Trump told British nationalist politician Nigel Farage to oppose the kind of offshore wind farms that Mr. Trump believes will more the pristine view from one of his two Scottish golf courses, the New York Times reported. Soon after the publication of that article last night, Trump suggested that the conversation with Farage wasn't a big deal. Prior to the election it was well known that I have interests in properties all over the world. Only the crooked media makes this a big deal. He tweeted. But here's why Trump's post-election business dealings matter, they could potentially violate the Constitution's little-known emoluments clause. Get to know the emoluments clause. The Constitution states, no title of nobility shall be granted by the United States, and no person holding any office of profit or trust under them, shall, without the consent of the Congress, accept of any present, emolument, office, or title, of any kind whatever, from any king, prince, or foreign state, the emphasis is ours. As the New York Times writes, emolument means compensation for labor or services, and President Obama's Justice Department looked at the matter when he won the Nobel Peace Prize, which included a $1.4 million check. The Justice Department lawyer concluded that Mr. Obama could accept the prize because the committee that chose him was independent of the Norwegian government and the prize itself was privately financed. But he said that the answer would be different if a foreign government sought to make a payment to a sitting president. In a footnote, the lawyer added, corporations owned or controlled by a foreign government are presumptively foreign states under the emoluments clause. Any profit Trump might make from a foreign government-backed company could be a violation. And, of course, Trump still has plenty of business ties with corporations tied with foreign governments. His ventures include multi-million dollar real estate arrangements, with Mr. Trump's companies either as a full-own Aurora branding partner, in Ireland and Uruguay. The Bank of China is a tenant in Trump Tower and a lender for another building in Midtown Manhattan where Mr. Trump has a significant partnership interest, the Times adds. The reason why the emoluments clause hasn't been much of a topic before is that past presidents have disassociated themselves from their business dealings. That isn't the case with Trump. At least not yet. The executive actions Trump plans to take on his first day. President-elect Donald Trump on Monday announced a list of executive actions he plans to implement on the first day of his presidency meant to restore our laws and bring back our jobs, one of us writes. Trump said he will signal the United States' intention to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, roll back energy regulations, take steps to guard against cyber attacks, investigate visa program abuses, and implement rules against members of his administration leaving to become lobbyists. Noticeably absent in the video announcing these upcoming moves, nothing on a border wall, nothing on Obamacare, and nothing on Obama's executive actions on immigration. Cabinet Watch. Here is our running list of possible candidates we've been hearing about so far. We'll continue to update it as the president-elect's team makes its choices final. Secretary of State, Rudy Giuliani, John Bolton, Nikki Haley, Bob Corkar, Mitt Romney. Attorney General, Giuliani, Jeff Sessions offered. Treasury, Steve Nutchen, Jeb Hensarling. Defense, Jim Talent, Tom Cotton. Homeland, Michael McCall, David Clark. Interior, Sarah Palin, Mary Fallon. HHS, Ben Carson, advisor says he's declined. Education, Carson, advisor says he's declined, Michelle Reed. Commerce, Lou Eisenberg, Linda McMahon, Wilbur Ross. Transportation, John Micah, Deb Fisher, Lou Barletta, Elaine Zhao. Agriculture, Rick Perry, Sid Miller. CIA Director, Mike Pompeo offered. UN Ambassador, Richard Grenell. National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn offered. RNC Chair, Rana Romney McDaniel, David Irvin. Bernie Sanders, it is not good enough for someone to say, I'm a woman. Vote for me. Vox, this is where there is going to be division within the Democratic Party, Sanders said Sunday in Boston, according to Boston Magazine reporter Kyle Scott Kloss. One of the struggles that you're going to be seeing in the Democratic Party is whether we go beyond identity politics. More, I think it's a step forward in America if you have an African-American head or CEO of some major corporation, Sanders said. But you know what? If that guy is going to be shipping jobs out of this country and exploiting his workers, it doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot if he's black or white or Latino. More, it is not good enough for someone to say, I'm a woman. Vote for me. He continued. No, that's not good enough. What we need is a woman who has the guts to stand up to Wall Street, to the insurance companies, to the drug companies. This has been the Trump Breaking News Network. Please subscribe and share to stay up to date on the latest news about our president. Be informed.